Hi, good morning everyone. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to practice respect to certification exam in SAP website. SAP is providing some sample questions. Let's see how to practice that. Google training SAP. Go to SAP training shop. Go to SAP certification and then list of valid certifications. Okay. Once you come to the list of valid certifications, you can input TS452, whatever the code you wanted to write that you can select. I'm focusing on the TS452, so you can select. Select the latest TS452-2020. When you see the home screen of uh, respect to certification exam, there you can see an option called sample questions. Okay. That will give an idea. Okay, you can see here 15 minutes of time giving for clearing that sample test and click on continue. Okay. Which of the following elements influence the GL account determination. Okay. Automatic account determination, what are the things will be influenced and SAP has provided there are two correct answers. You can read chart of accounts, valuation area, business area and controlling area, chart of accounts and valuation area because valuation area it handles about the valuation grouping code and chart of accounts where you are giving while entering to OPYC. Okay. Let's go faster, otherwise the time is completed. Then you should not click submit button even in the real exam also. Okay, because submit means the final one and click on next question. Which of the following assignments are possible for a purchasing organization? What are possible? Several plans from the same company code we can assign. Several plans from different we can assign. One purchasing organization to multiple, not possible. One person comes to one company code. We already got the three answers. Click on next question. You want to automatically create a scheduling agreement, delivery schedule. In the program to generate background, creating schedule. Yeah, through, M through MRP, we can generate uh, automatic scheduling agreement. You can read each option properly. During the other point planning, which time elements does the forward scheduling procedure take into account when calculating the availability date? Three correct answers to this question. Total five options are there. Total self life, no impact in this area. And this is about the forward scheduling procedure no fact of goods issue processing time. So it will be planned delivery time, GR processing time and purchasing department processing time. Click on next question. Confirmed quantities and dates must be recorded in the purchase order item. Your purchasing department expects suppliers to send purchase order confirmations and shipping notifications. What do you need to configure in customizing? Confirmation control key should be required. So a purchasing value key, it's not, it's out of control. And uh, sequence of two confirmation types, at least one. Yeah, this one. We should have a confirmation controlling key with a sequence of two confirmation types. That is, that should be the correct answer. Let's check that. A certain field in the material master must be maintained as a mandatory entry during initial screen. Three correct answers. Purchase group is out of answer. Company code, there is no company code role in the field selection. Material type, transaction code and procurement type. So the procurement type we will have, right? Yeah internal procurement, rational procurement, like that you can make it man manageable. 
So sometimes what happens, especially this, when it comes to three correct answers, if you are not able to answer properly for three, you can use this reverse methodology also, like purchasing group or uh, company code. It won't be the correct answers. So when you're getting that confidence, if you have any uh, little less confidence on procurement type, still you can select that. Okay. So procurement type, because the procurement type, we have internal, external, right? That also can control the, which are the mandatory fields. Okay. What are the use of this assessment navigator? It will tell you that what are the questions you already answered. Okay. Let's see five questions answered, 60 are there. So that's what it is going to tell you. You can use this one if you are missing any questions. When you're attempting 80 questions in the real exam, they, that will be helpful for you to identify the missing questions for which you have not yet given the correct answer. What can you specify in an output condition record? Three correct answers, output medium, partner function, email address, no, validity period or output time. This is about output condition, right? Output condition record. It's not the pricing condition record. So it should be output time. Where you are going to segregate, right? Immediately it should trigger or else uh, it won't like ME9 in a transaction if it is purchase order. So output time should be the correct answer. That's it. In which sequence does the system reach for the valid source of supply when you manually create a purchase requisition with auto source determination. So source of supply, what is the sequence? Quota arrangement is on top, okay? Quota arrangement is on top. So that should be number one. You can check it, it's easiest. When you're remembering that quota arrangement is the powerful, then easily you can answer this one because they have not given any number one quota arrangement. If it, if it was given, then the confusion would be created. So quota element is the option one and source list and then outline agreement, then info record, the regular vendor flag or something. So this is the sequence for source of supply. Next question. What happens when you post a logistics invoice for a purchase order that you have received in the system? So when you post Miro invoice verification, what will happen in the purchase order? The payment is posted against open, no payment will not be posted once invoice is posted, it is only that uh, liability will be increased, like it open payments will be shown, the balances, but not. Accounting documents are created, is correct. Purchase order history is updated. Because once you post invoice, the purchase order history will be updated with invoice document. So only two correct answers, so these two. So not only knowing about answers, reading this note, that will be helpful for you. For example, if three answers are there, then you have to read about uh, what, what, what could be that one and all. So these are very easy options when you're going in a reverse way also, you can filter out options which are completely wrong so that the number of options are decreased to finalize the correct answers. Next question. For which of the following characteristics can you set up flexible workflow for purchase order approval? So the flexible workflow, which is on S4 HANA, it is not available in ECC. Okay, uh, what are the characteristics you can maintain for a PO approval? Document type, currency. Blindly you can answer these two. Now the confusion will come from whether it is material group or plant, supplier also won't be available. Plant or material group, you may get little confused. So you can just observe uh, and if you are already read properly, so answer is material group, document type and currency. Here, document type and currency we are easily able to select based on the ECC knowledge also. Okay, and the material group and plant little, you need to, uh, based on the, when you're reading the documents, if you remember, you can select that option. I hope uh, these three options are the correct. Only confusion here will be the plant. Plant is making little confusion here. You're entering, Supplier invoice with reference to a purchase order. After verifying that the balance is zero, yeah, when you're getting the mirror, balance is zero in the right hand side, you decide to post the invoice. 
yes the system detects quantity differences that exceed the upper tolerance limit specified in the customizing so the tolerance limit the invoice blocking concept once that uh, it is crossing the tolerance limit what will happen a message is issued yes no message is issued is completely out okay standard always message will be issued so we have to see the three options only a message is issued you can post the invoice and it it is automatically released for payment this is the concept itself the blocking for payment when the tolerance is crossing it will block for the payment so option 1 is out of phrase no message is issued option 2 is also out of phrase a message is issued you can post the invoice and it is automatically blocked for payment the automatically block for payment is the correct answer a message is issued you can only for the invoice already we have the correct answer the concept of tolerance limit is for the invoice blocking so once it is crossing the respective tolerance limit system will block the invoice for the payment now we verify the assessment navigator all the 11 questions are already selected so you can submit see still 5 minutes it is giving the pop up you have to plan how much time you are spending for the each question and if you are out 180 minutes and uh, 80 questions so you almost have each question but two minutes above so wherever you have to spend more time it is generating confusion you can read thoroughly two three times the question so that you can answer properly and wherever you are not confident at that point of time don't waste the time for that respect to question and you just park it and go to the next question submit yes 11 out of 11 like, uh, i hope i was able to explain to you people how to answer the questions and uh, the reverse way different people will have a different method finally if you practice well if you read the questions properly then only you can give a better performance okay otherwise the confusion will be definitely created and uh, now we have attempted only 11 questions the two three questions i also felt like uh, whether it is correct or not for example flexible workflow plant is available so i got an impression because of the ecc ecc we used to give the plant also uh, as part of uh, pure workflow so such kind of two three questions are confusion definitely we will give a wrong so confusion questions leave it completely unknown questions leave it still you should be in a position to get at least 65 70% 75% okay at least you should be in a position to score if you prepare well i hope this sample questions how to answer and some of the inputs based on my experience and uh, i have provided that tips may not be applicable to all the people but we should read the complete documentation of ts452 before going for the exam and once you attend the exam like during when you are answering the questions read the questions properly and answer the note point two questions two answers are correct or three answers are correct that statement if you don't read it then there are chances for answering wrongly i hope this practice session is helpful for the people who are going for the certification exam i hope my efforts are helpful for um, people if you like that video click on the like button and share this video with your sap friends the example might be ts452 but you are going to get uh, such benefit for any kind of uh, certification when you are writing you can practice and there are different websites also available at, for practicing the questions before going for the exam at least 5 days or 6 days in advance practice more questions as many as you can so that you will understand the type of questions and the two answers questions three answers question one answer question one answer question is straight forward because of the radio button you can select it but when it comes to the check boxes where you two questions two answers are correct or uh, where two answers are correct or three answers are correct if you don't read that the guidelines there are chances for wrong thanks for watching keep supporting us and if you came to our channel for the first time click on the subscribe button and keep supporting thank you